and the defense were pretty tolerant of my questioning of Ms. Willis. I think it's clear that she's hostile toward the state and is only willing to answer what she's already admitted to or what is documented. And so I'd ask for permission to continue to lead her. I object to that, Your Honor. I think that she she's not a hostile witness. She's answering the questions appropriately and expounded to or her what answers, it's so. That's part of my concern is the expounding that seems to be in favor of the defendant. Uh, particularly one example, Your Honor, is when I said um, to something effective, well, you knew you were coming in to be the nanny. And she said, well, he would have never hired me if um, his daughters wouldn't have approved. I think that demonstrates, one, that she's out to protect him as much as she can, and two, I think that opens up to the door, the door to the evidence in my motion to admit intrinsic or 404B evidence. Because in those examples, which she is aware of, and other witnesses, and I think that she can just be instructed just to answer the questions that are asked her rather than, you know, going directly into leading questions. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, based on the prior relationship of this witness with the defendant, I do find that her interests are to some degree aligned with the defense, and I will allow the state to lead. Anything else? Um, in reference to my, I, I'm moving the court to allow me to go into the 404B evidence as it relates to him prioritizing Gypsy over his children. He kicked the daughters out in favor of them. That contradicts her testimony that he would not have brought her in if the daughters had not approved of it. Um, the, the theft of Giselle's identity was, was prioritizing her over the children. The will was prioritizing her over the children. And I'm going to object to that, Your Honor. This has been excluded and is highly prejudicial. And I don't think the door has been opened. I need to hear more of her testimony. I'll reserve on that. Thank you. Anything else today? Not before she comes to the stand, Your Honor. Very good. Thank you. Did you?
Let's have him in. Thank you. Good morning. Please be seated. We'll go on the record in the matter of State of Utah versus McNeil. Mr. McNeil is present with his counsel. The state's attorneys are also present. Uh, you may continue your direct examination. Thank you, Your Honor. Ms. Willis, if you'll come forward here, it's been three days since you took the oath. I'd like to have you sworn again. If you raise your right hand. Thank you. Please be seated here and respond to counsel's questions. Ms. Willis, I want to follow up on a couple of things we talked about on Friday. Yes. Uh, on Friday, you stated that in or around February or March of 2007, the defendant moved you into a duplex in Lehigh and that he gave you a debit card for, to use for what you needed or wanted and he helped pay for your schooling and the two of you were having sex more, correct? Yes. And I asked you, isn't this demonstrating a commitment or a more serious relationship? And you replied something to the effect of, no, it was casual or something like that. Is that correct? That's correct. And then I showed you uh, permission to move toward the bench until the ward witness is needed, Your Honor. Yep, go ahead. And then I showed you State's Exhibits 39 and 40, which were emails that you had sent to someone that you'd met online somehow. And in these you had said, a very good and best friend of mine has recently become much more than that and followed up in response to how that happened. I met him online a year and a half ago. We've always been great together. And just recently his reasoning and views changed and we are together now. What relationship are you talking about in exhibits 39 and 40? I was referring to Martin. Okay. I want to go um, back to around the time of Michelle McNeil's death. Um, in April of 2007, do you remember taking pictures of yourself? I, I took pictures of myself whenever I thought I looked okay, yeah. You remember the specific content? Well, let me go back and strike that. Um, we went through phone records, and in those phone records, there was a number of picture messages that you sent to the defendant, correct? Yes. Do you remember the content of those picture messages? Just general ideas, maybe. We'll have you look at this. Will you look at each page of that and tell me if you recognize those?
Yes, I do. And what are those? Those are photos of me. And are those pictures you took? Yes. And are these pictures that you would have sent to the defendant? I believe so. Okay. Um, these have dates on them, and I want to ask you about a few in particular, okay? On the right. first page, what are these pictures showing? Me lying down on a pillow. Okay. And what was the date that these were created? Um, created date 412. Of what year? Of, I'm sorry, 2007. Okay, so these were taken the day after Michelle McNeil's death. Or 12, uh, yes. And around this time you were sending picture messages to the defendant? Yes. Okay. Would you describe the contents of these two pictures for me? Uh, they are of me in a mirror, um, you know, exposing my back. Is it exposing below your back as well? There's one picture where it, it uh, is a little bit suggestive. It's showing your buttocks. Yeah. And in the other one, you're, it's not showing your chest area, but you are shirtless. Um, well, I'm, my, my back is exposed. I, okay. I can't quite say to tell you the truth. I think, I think I had a dress that had like a sheer back to it. Okay. And, and then the, a number of these other pictures, it's your exposed back. Mm-hmm. Okay. And again, the date on, on the, these two is what? That's 412 of 2007. Thank you. Mm-hmm. I want to go back to um, the, the nanny issue. When exactly were you hired? Uh, I believe it was somewhere around the 20th. Of April? I believe so. Okay. Did, um, how did you interview for the position? I came to, uh, I came to the house and um, Damien and Vanessa Damien's girlfriend and the younger children were there, and um, I told them who I was and my background in nursing and um, that sort of thing. I just kind of gave them an idea of who I was. Did uh, the defendant tell you if there were other candidates to be interviewed? He didn't tell me. Did he tell you if anyone else was interviewed? I, I don't recall that conversation. Did he tell you that you were going to be getting the job? He didn't tell me that. And after you were hired, the defendant took you around to different people handing out thank you gifts and introducing you, correct? Introducing me was a side subject. It was to thank them for the, their support during his bad time. Okay, but in the process of giving gifts, you were with him and he would introduce who you were. I was with everyone. The children were there. Okay. And how did he introduce you? Uh, I believe he introduced me as the nanny. And what name did he use? Jillian. And the two of you resumed your sexual relationship when you were moved into the home as the nanny? Yes. And the two of you were hiding the fact that you were sexually involved from the children? Yes. If I told you that others have testified that you were not much of a nanny in terms of cooking, cleaning, and taking care of the children, and were just staring goo-eyed at the defendant, what would be your response? My response is that when the adult children were home, I deferred to them and went back to studying my nursing. Um, I did actually help with the children. Um, in early May, the two of you began to take trips, didn't you? You and the defendant. May of 2007? Correct. I believe we went to Wyoming to visit my family. Okay. Did the two of you leave together? I don't remember. I don't remember if we left together or separate. Okay. But you were still in a relationship? Yes. And you may have left separately so that you didn't send the appearance of being together. Isn't that true? Possible. 
So when you were going to Wyoming with the defendant who was taking care of the children? I, I, I don't remember. I think maybe, they, uh, maybe Alexis or one of the daughters. Okay. I truthfully don't re recall the details. So you were, you were brought in to help take care of the children, but then you would go on the weekend with the defendant to Wyoming on occasion? I, yeah, on occasion. Um, in May, you began receiving emails, uh, I love you emails, that kind of thing from the defendant, correct? I, I don't remember the email specifically. I remember the texts and that sort of thing. Were you exchanging terms of endearment in text? I expect so, yeah. I love you, I miss you, I wish you were here at, were here at work, that kind of thing? Probably. Okay. In June of 2007, you began looking at wedding rings, didn't you? I'm sorry, what month? June of 2007. Um, um, June or July. Are you familiar with a company known as bids.com? I am. What company is that? Uh, it's an online company where they post things that they want to sell, and it's similar to eBay where you make bids on what you're interested in. Were you making bids on wedding rings? Uh, Martin and I were. Okay. Previously, you have said that your email address was Phoenix Sheba, correct? Yes, that was one of them. You see this right here? What is the date of this bids best picks email? This? Yeah. June 26th. Okay, and this one? June 28th. Okay. <clears throat> Jeff, can I see what you And you had, in fact, emailed for an astrological wedding date. Isn't that true? I don't remember that. Okay. I, astrology has interested me in the past. Sure. So you were you were looking for a date that would be appropriate astrologically between you and the defendant. I suppose. I don't remember the specifics, but astrology and different things has interested me. Okay. Would you look at this one? Do you oh. remember this email? I. I don't specifically, but I see it here. So. And what is it regarding? It says, regarding astrology wedding date questionnaire. And when was that? Thursday, June 28th. Okay, thank you. You and the defendant went to Wyoming in early July of 2007, correct? I believe so. Sounds and the right. defendant proposed to you officially. Okay. Is that correct? I believe so. It's been so long. This, you don't remember him proposing to you? This relationship has been over a very long time. I do remember him proposing. Sorry. And, and where was that at? It was in Wyoming. It was at a restaurant. Nice restaurant. Yeah. And he gave you a ring at this point, or did the ring come later? Um... I think he did give me a ring at that time. But you were later given a pretty nice ring, correct? Maybe. I, I, don't rec I truthfully do not recall the details I, when things okay. happened. I know there was a ring. I know I was given the ring. I don't remember which location it happened. Have you been proposed to since the defendant proposed to you? Yes. Okay. Um, the, the, the engagement ring that you received at some point from the defendant, whether it was the day he proposed to you in July in Wyoming or it was another day, what kind of a ring was this? It was a diamond ring. How big? How big? Carrot? Yeah. Uh, it was 
four and a half carats. Remember the cost of that ring? Uh, it was around 7000 Okay. And um, the defendant told, did you hear the defendant tell his children about the marriage, the impending marriage? I think I heard that he had told them. From him? I... I, I believe he said that he had, he had sent them a message that that was the case. That you guys were getting married. Something like that. And, and that you were getting married in the temple. I don't, I, I don't know what he told his children. Uh, overruled, she says she doesn't know. Had you previously been married in the temple? Yes. So if the two of you, you and the defendant, were to be married in the temple... Would that be possible? I'm going to object, Your Honor, as to relevance of this. It's, it's impeachment at this point, Your Honor. How is it relevant? Well, it's relevant because if she had previously been married in the temple, she would have had to move to cancel that temple marriage. And if she and the defendant were serious about their marriage, then she would have taken that step. We did. There's no question pending before you. Uh, I'm... Anything else? Well, we're trying to demonstrate clearly the significance and the depth of this relationship at this point, Your Honor. I'm going to sustain the objection. The importance is the, is the marriage plan, not where it was going to happen. Go ahead. So in terms of the marriage plan, the two of you were very serious about getting married. I believe so. Your Honor, could we approach? Yes, go ahead. Were the two of you ever officially married, though? No. Despite not being officially married, you still held yourself out as Jillian McNeil? Yes. The wife of the defendant? Yes.
that the mark is States Exhibit 43 when you look at that. Okay. You recognize that? Yes. What is it? It's an application for an identification card. And who filled this application out? Um, Martin filled it out. And how was how did that happen? I was out in the car and I told him to go in there and make arrangements and if that was approved then I would come in and sign it. So he set out the filling out of this application? He filled out the information. Okay. And what was the purpose of this application? It was to give me access to the, the military base with him. To get you an ID for that, correct? Yes. And what name was, was used for you? Jillian G. McNeil. And did you hold yourself out as married to someone? Yes. Married to whom? Martin McNeil. And did you have a marriage date on this? Marriage date is listed as April 14th. Of what year? 2007. What is the significance of April 14th of 2007? That is the day of the funeral. Of whose funeral? Michelle's. And the defendant filled this form out, and you signed it and filed it with that entity? Yes. Move to offer Exhibit 41, Your Honor. I had an objection to that, Your Honor. Uh, stated at the bench conference, correct? Yes. Uh, the objection is overruled. The document will be received. Ms. Willis, we've discussed a number of things in the last couple of days. The two of you go on trips together, you're texting, you're texting a lot, you're sending picture messages, defendant moves you into a house in Lehigh, you're having sex more, he gives you a discretionary card, helps pay for your schooling, you communicate a lot, you tell a potential suitor your relationship is much more than that. Um, Michelle dies, you go to the funeral, you talk to him at the funeral, you text him at the Objection, funeral. Objection, Your Honor, he's just testifying here. Sustained, is there a question here? In light of all this information, are you, are you telling us you don't know anything more about Michelle's death? That is correct. Your Honor, I'd like to publish states exhibits 39, 40, and 43. Here or? With the tree. Very well. And all tendered witness. Hi. Did um, you, I'm sorry. Why don't um, give them? Some yeah, time. let's just give them a few minutes. Why don't you take a few minutes to look those documents over? As soon as you're done, cross examination will commence.
Chief, have you had an opportunity to review those documents? Could you collect them for me? You may cross-examine the witness. Um, you got a deal from the prosecution to testify here today. I did. And the deal was that if you testified, you wouldn't have to spend three years in prison. Correct. And that case that they're talking about had nothing uh, to do with the death of Michelle, did it? No. And part of your deal with the prosecution is that you were required to testify truthfully in, this, in these proceedings. That's true. And if you didn't testify truthfully... You will, you will have breached that part of your deal with them. Yes. And you will be looking at spending three years in prison. Yes. You also know that if you testify falsely, you could be charged with perjury. Yes. And spend up to 15 years in the Utah State Prison. Yes. And you were told that by Doug Whitney. That's correct. And Doug Whitney is an investigator with the Utah County Attorney's Office. Yes. So you have a lot to lose if you do not testify truthfully today, right? Yes. And did you testify truthfully last Friday? Yes. And today? Yes. So you testified <clears throat> truthfully for the prosecution? Yes. And you will testify truthfully when I ask you questions as well? Yes. Did you ever use Yahoo Messenger when communicating with Martin? Yes, frequently. Okay, can you tell the jury what Yahoo Messenger is? Yahoo Messenger um, was available through the Yahoo site. You could type on your computer and it would send as if it were, I mean, it would send to someone's phone as a text message. Okay, so if there were texts from Yahoo Messenger in those phone records, those would be from you? Yes. Now, we don't have the content of those texts, correct? Correct. Those weren't able to be recovered? I have no knowledge of them. Is it fair to say that Martin never talked to you about leaving Michelle? No. For you? And he certainly never talked to you about Objection harming here, Michelle? Uh, sustained. It's a statement of the defendant not offered against him. Um, you also, there were also phone records in July of 2007 yes. that you reviewed? Yes. Okay, and you went uh, over those texts? I did. And do you recall going over the texts of July 8, 2007? Yes. Okay. And you texted 131 texts just on that day alone? Yes. And July 9th of 2007? Yes. And you texted 76 times with Martin on that day? Correct. Okay. And this is when you were living with Martin? Yes. Okay. And so you were with him at night and things like that? I was. So would you say that you were a big texter? Very big texter. Okay. In January of 2000, and seven, February 2007, March 2007, April of 2007. What are the generally the total texts that you would text during those months? Uh, uh, total? Yes. In the neighborhood of two or 3,000 texts. I text everybody. I preferred text to phone call. And who were some of the other people you would text? Some of your girlfriends? Yes, some of my girlfriends. Uh, Miranda. Marinda? Marinda. Holly? Yes. Erica? Teresa? Celeste. Celeste. And other people as well? That's correct. Okay. I have one moment, Your Honor. That's all I have, Your Honor. Do you have cross exam or uh, redirect? Very good. Very well. Go ahead. 
Ms. Willis, <clears throat> you have previously testified to being convicted of felonies. This is true. And um, Ms. Gustin clarified that those had nothing to do with the homicide or alleged homicide of Michelle McNeil in this case. Um, but those were crimes of, of a fraudulent nature, some of them. Yes. Is that correct? Deceit, misrepresentation? Yes. Okay, thank you. Anything further? Nothing further. May this witness be released from her subpoena I don't or? Know if there's questions from the jury, but we would ask that she remain on her subpoena until the conclusion of the trial. Very good. Do you have questions of this witness? You'll pass them to the end of the row, please.
Ladies and gentlemen, I think that I instructed you at the beginning of the trial, but uh, it was my intent to say this last week. You may have questions about why some questions are asked and others are not. Um, evidence comes into a trial based on rules. Some questions are appropriate under those rules, other and others are not, and it's my responsibility to make that decision. Uh, Ms. Willis, there's a few questions from the jury. Yes. Council, one more. To begin with, I'll, I'll ask this question. It's just a yes or no question to begin with. Was there a, a reason that, that it was decided that you would be introduced at the temple to a family matter, member instead of just introducing you at the nanny interview? Yes or no, was there a reason for that? Yes. And who gave you that reason? Martin thought it would be a good idea to meet someplace nice, quiet, soothing. Did you have previous experience as a nanny prior to working as a nanny for the McNeil children? No. What did Martin tell you that led you to believe that your relationship had become much more? He didn't tell me anything. It was the fact that he was helping me through school that made it more of a, of a um, circumstance. I was very busy, and I was seeing a little more of him. Did Martin ever discuss Michelle's health or surgery with you? No, um, I overheard a conversation where um, she had had a, a high blood pressure that day, and he said it needed to be controlled before surgery, but that was, that was the extent of what I knew. Do you have follow-up questions from the state? I do, Your Honor. Go ahead. <coughs> but before the surgery, you were aware that it was going to be taking place? Yes. And that when it had taken place, that it had taken place? Yes. Ms. Gustin asked you about um, going to prison and such. Um, Your Honor, this is outside the scope of the jury questions. I'll allow him uh, to reopen, and you may reexamine. Um, going to prison wasn't necessarily a certainty. That was a potential consequence, correct? Yes. And so it would have been based upon your sentencing in general, not 
just because you didn't cooperate in this investigation, correct? Would you please restate that? What I'm getting at is you would have been sentenced based upon a lot of factors and not because you didn't cooperate in this investigation, correct? Um, a lot of factors. I have cooperated every time I've been in sure. any situation. And I'm not situation. suggesting otherwise. Okay. What I'm saying is that in your state cases, you were given no jail time, correct? That is correct. And in other cases, you were given a significant time period to serve, correct? Yes. And in this case, if you hadn't cooperated, you would have been sentenced like any other defendant, probably. Probably. And that doesn't necessarily Objection, mean. Objection, speculation. Sustained. Oh, I'll, that's all I have, Your Honor. Thank you. You may examine on the jury questions and any additional scope raised by the state. Um, you haven't been trained as a nanny, but isn't that correct? That I have not been trained as a nanny. Okay. I had a child of my own. All right. Tell me what you did with uh, the children. What were your nanny duties? I would get up, make sure they were getting ready for school, um, getting breakfast. I'd take them to school. I would go to my nursing classes. Um, I would come back. I would, I would take them to dance. We could stop at the grocery. Um, I'd help with dinner if Martin wasn't cooking help them make dinner sometimes. So you were going to nursing school, so you were busy during this time as well? I was. Okay. But you were doing something? Yes. That's all I have, Your Honor. Nothing further, Your Honor. As previously stated, we don't anticipate bringing her back, but we'd like her to remain under subpoena. Ms. Willis, she will remain under your trial subpoena until the conclusion of the trial. If you're needed, you'll be notified to come back to court. You may step down today. Thank you. Call your next witness. State calls Roma Henry. Roma Henry. Ms. Henry, would you come forward here to the clerk's desk, please raise your right hand and take an oath. Thank you. If you'd be seated here and respond to counsel's questions. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? I'm good. Good. Will you state your name and uh, spell it, please? <clears throat> Roma Henry, R-O-M-A-H-E-N-R-I-E. -E. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> will you state your occupation generally? Right now or what it was? Uh, let, let's talk about what you're doing right now. Right now I'm retired. What was your occupation? Um, I was administrator at the Utah State Developmental Center. Um, were you employed at the uh, uh, Developmental Center in April of 2007? Yes, sir. And how long had, did you work there? I worked there from 1985 to 2010. It was 2010 when you retired? Yes. What were, you duty, what were your duties in April of 2007? I was administrator, unit director. Can you briefly describe what that entails? I was responsible for uh, buildings that housed residents who lived there. I was also responsible for janitorial services, 
uh, records day program. Um, an administrator served on steering team committee and other committees. Uh, did you do all that work yourself or did you have a team of people working w under, underneath you? Well, I had a lot of people taking care of the residents and program centers and stuff. Okay. Uh, did you come to know Martin McNeil through that employment? Yes, sir. Um, what, um, how did you interact with him? Let me ask a better question. In what uh, capacities did you in interact with Dr. McNeil? He was the medical director who served on the steering team, and I was an administrator who served on the steering team. Okay, so you would do that together. Um, let, me, let me ask you, where was your office located? It was in the administration building down the hall from the medical services. Thank you. Most of the time, the last two years, it was out in one of the residential buildings in 2008. Okay. And in April 2007, where was I it? was down the hall from the medical building services. Okay. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Do you remember April 11th, 2007? Yes, sir. Um, what time did you arrive at work that morning? Around 8 o'clock. Do you recall what time you left? It was later that day because I was helping Melissa Frost clean up the safety fair, so it would have been... I may have gone home at 5 and come back at 10, but I was there way late because we were cleaning up after the afternoon shift. Uh, what were you working on that day? Safety fair. Uh, is that where you were most of the day? Yes. Do you recall where that fair was held? Heather Building. Uh, how is that uh, building positioned in relation to the administration building? Oh, north, through a parking lot. Some distance? Um, not too far. I mean, it's not a block. It's, you know, relatively close. How, wh wh how long would you estimate it would take you to walk from the administration building to the Heather, Heather building? Me, I'm a pretty fast walker. I could probably make it in a minute or two. Okay. Um, <clears throat> were you there uh, in the Heather building most of that morning? Yes. Did you see Dr. McNeil that morning? Uh, most of the early morning, no. Around 11, yes. Okay. What happened around 11? We were um, giving out awards for the building or the department with the most least amount of injuries or best safety record for the year. Medical department was getting one, and he came in to get the award. Okay. Were you aware of any changes in the scheduling <coughs> for that award ceremony? Oh, normally, the awards were given out around noon. He came in about 11 requesting that the award be given then. Okay. Uh, and was the award, uh, award in fact, given then? Yes, we scurried around, got the superintendent, and uh, arranged to give the award early at his request. Uh, did you hear Martin talking about wanting to get the award earlier? Did I hear him at that time? Yeah. Yes, sir. What did he say? He said, if we're going to get this done, I need to get this award now. I have to go pick up my daughter from school and check on my wife. Um, <clears throat> did you play any part in that ceremony? Um, not in the actual ceremony, but I took a picture of the group that received the award. How did that come about? Some, I was observing. Someone handed me a camera and asked me to take a picture of the group, and I did. Okay. May I approach you, you may. I'm showing you uh, Lieutenant Marty State's exhibit number 44. It's a photograph. Would you look at that and tell me if you recognize it? Yes. Um, is it, uh, well, what's, what's in the photograph? Well. Let me ask you this, a better question. What does the photograph depict? Represent? Yeah, what's. It's the superintendent, Karen Clark, giving the award to Guy Thompson. Dennis Bellos is standing on the side, Dr. McNeil and Melissa Frost are there. Is that a fair and accurate representation of what you recall happening the morning of April 11th, 2007? Yes. Your Honor, the state offers, uh, if I could approach him. 44, is that right? Any objection to 44? No, Your Honor. 44 is received. Uh, 
Um, I, I just want to make sure you mentioned this already. Is Dr. McNeil in that photograph? Yes. Okay. Um, what did Dr. McNeil say to you after you took the photo? He said, did you get me in that picture? Make sure you got me in that picture. I said, yes, Dr. Mail, I got you in the picture. You maybe better take a second one. Make sure you got me in that picture. Did you take a second one? I don't think I did because I ensured him I had him in the first one. Okay. Did he say why it was so important that he be in the photograph? No. Um, <clears throat> did you learn later that day what happened to his wife? Yes. Um, were you, uh, did you have the opportunity to interact with Dr. McNeil any time after his wife's death? Not until after the funeral. Um, when was the when was the first time that you talked to him afterward? He showed up to work. I think the Monday after the funeral, the steering team. We were all quite surprised. Um, <clears throat> is this uh, the steering team meeting in the administration building? Yes. Uh, did you talk to him at, at all at that meeting? Well, as a general group, we said, what are you doing here? You should be home. He said, oh, the older children are there with the younger children, and I have nothing to do at home. Okay. Um, did you notice Dr. McNeil wearing anything different the week after his wife died? Within a week or thereabouts, he was wearing a different wedding band. Okay. What was different about it? If you recall. Let me ask you first. Do you recall what was different? I am not sure what was different. It seems like it might have been a turquoise inlay, but I can't remember. I just know after sitting on steering team with a group of people for seven, eight years, you recognize the wedding bands of everyone. And then when suddenly they're missing or changed, you notice that. Okay. Um, <clears throat> did you ask uh, Dr. McNeil about that? I did not, but someone in the steering team did. Did you hear his reply? He said something to the effect he'd lost his wedding band and he didn't feel comfortable without one, so he'd gone and purchased a cheap one or something and put it on. Okay. Um, did you ever uh, wish Dr. McNeil condolences or express condolences to him? Yes. Later in that first week after the funeral, I had not had a chance to speak to him. I went down to his office. Okay. Um, uh, that's in the administration building again? Yes. Uh, what did you, do you recall your conversation? Yes. Will you describe that to us? Well, I honestly just wanted to go express my condolences. I didn't realize his wife was sick, and I um, just wanted to go say I'm sorry, and I didn't realize your wife was sick, and... How did, how did he respond? He was very, you know, sad. He said, well, she had um, insisted on having elective surgery that I didn't believe she needed, and she thought she did. She wanted to go up north where no one would know her, and um, so we went up north to have the surgery. Um, they missed a heart condition or something that she had, and we didn't know she had, and she had a reaction to the medications that she was taking. Uh, he said the worst part was that he had signed everything over, the house and everything over in her name shortly before that because he had a cancer or something in his foot, and he didn't know if he was going to live, and so he had signed everything over to her, thinking that he might not survive. Uh, did he talk about having to transfer that property back to himself? Right. He said now he was in a mess because everything was in her name. Um. Your Honor, may I publish uh, Exhibit 44 to the jury? Can you just show it here um, or not? Start right in. Okay. You may. Thank you. I'll, I'll tend to the witness at this point. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. As I understood your testimony, you were at the safety fair um, most of the day on April 11th, 2000? Yes, sir. <clears throat> and while you were there, you had the opportunity to observe uh, the medical booth. Mm -hmm. And uh, you observed um, uh, one of the other medical uh, staff people, uh, Robert Spencer, manning the booth. Yes, sir. In place of Dr. McNeil. Yes, sir. 
and in fact, uh, you even reviewed pictures to to prove your your recollection, right? Right. You um, also attended uh, the funeral of Michelle McNeil. Yes, sir. And uh, at that funeral, you re recall uh, Martin McNeil's daughter speaking? Yes. And uh, you recall one of his daughters, Rachel, because she used to work at the department. Yes, Hospital. I knew Rachel. And uh, at the funeral, uh, you, uh, you recall Rachel speaking about how sick her mother was. Your Honor, I, offered I, for its truth or for some other reason? I, I think that it's, it's offered as um, impeachment in relation to Rachel's testimony where she equivocated about what she, she said at the funeral. I, I think that should have been offered with Rachel then, Your Honor. Well, we did discuss it with, with Rachel. And so, so I think uh, this is the appropriate impeachment. I, I, Could you approach, please? Yes, sir. And that she'd never missed uh, an Easter egg hunt in the past. Yes, sir. And that she had to, to lay in bed while everybody else was, was out on the grass. Yes. Yes. Um, Do you have a surgery. perfect memory of what Rachel said at the funeral? No, sir, I don't. Did Rachel go into details about why Michelle was sick? I don't remember. I don't remember that. Why she missed the Easter egg hunt or anything like that? She just said that she was sick in bed um, from surgery, I think she said. Okay, thank you. Any questions for Ms. Henry? All right, thank you. May she be released? Or do you... You have no objection. Okay. Ms. Henry, you'll be released from your trial subpoena. Uh, which means you won't be brought back. Uh, you're done then. You may step down. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Next. They call Cheryl Radmall, Your Honor. Ms. Radmall, if you'll come up here to the clerk's desk, please raise your right hand and be sworn.
Thank you. If you'll be seated here. Good morning. Morning. Will you uh, state your name and then spell it, please? <clears throat> My name is Cheryl, C H E R Y L, Radmal, R A D M A L L. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> what city do you live in? I live in Orem. All right. Did you know Michelle McNeil? Yes, I did. Will you describe how you got to know her? Yes, I will. Um, Michelle moved in my neighborhood, and I don't think I had ever spoken to her, but in our church we have an organization for women called Relief Society. She was called to be the president of the Relief Society, and she called me to be her counselor. Okay. So the first time I met her was after she called me to be her counselor. About when was this? Oh, you want dates? <laughs> if you have a year or approximation. Um, my youngest son was born in 1997. The McNeils moved in when he was two, 1999, probably 2000, Okay. about 2000. How long did you work with her in that capacity? Two and a half years. Um, was that the extent of your relationship with her, or did your friendship continue? It continued after that. Will you describe that? We would go to lunch about once a month um, with the other counselor and the secretary of our, of our Relief Society. We continued as lunch friends. How would you describe the closeness of your relationship with Michelle? Um, I, you know, I think we were really close friends. I think the, the four of us formed a, a really great bond. Okay. Um, <clears throat> did, when did you learn that Michelle had died? I found out the day she died, another neighbor, Jan Hornberger, called me. All right. What did you do? Um, I called Lorraine and Karen to tell them. I was shocked. I called my husband first, I think, and then I called. I kind of didn't believe it at first, but... Um, Why were you shocked? Because I... Uh, well, <coughs> sustained without further foundation. Go ahead. Um, how often did you interact with Michelle before she died? After she moved, it wasn't quite as frequent as before she moved. Before she moved, it, we, you know, I saw her at church every Sunday, and I had one of their daughters in my primary class, Sabrina. And, um, but after they moved, you know, when people move, um, you know, she was in another city. So we would talk. I talked to her uh, maybe just two weeks, three weeks before she passed away. We were going to go to lunch for Karen's birthday at the end of March, and... Um, we had a lunch date set, and Michelle called me that morning re really upset um, because um, Martin had needed her to do some things, and she couldn't come to lunch with us. And she said, I really need. We called ourselves the Yaya's because Karen had cancer. Yes, and you're non-responsive. Sustained. Okay. Let me, um, let me ask you about um, when it comes to um, when she moved. Do you recall when that was in relation to her death? I'm bad with dates. Um, year and a half, two years before she died, year and a half, okay. I'm to think. 2000, yeah, probably two years before she died. Okay. She moved. Did you, did you interact with her frequently enough to know her general health and how she was? Yeah. Um, when we went to lunch, she was in great Your health. Your Honor, foundation is to witnesses of the next health. Uh, she may render a lay opinion about general health. Overruled. Go ahead. Michelle was in great health. What we frequently discussed was Martin's health because he was apparently, he had told her he was diagnosed with MS. Sustained. Um, <clears throat> Your Honor, may I request an instruction to the witness to just answer the question? You may. Uh, Listen carefully to the question as it's asked and just limit your answers to the, to the question that's asked of you. Go ahead. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> you said you, uh, you interacted with her. Uh, you knew that she was a healthy person. Mm -hmm. Let's go back to, the, to your statement that you were shocked when you learned that she had died. What was that surprise about? Well, I didn't know that she'd had surgery. She hadn't told us that. And, um, I, you know, I had talked to her a month before, and she was fine. And she, I, you know, she had a little bit of high blood pressure. I knew that. <coughs> but, 
overruled. She may answer. But um, it's you know she was perfectly healthy, and I had seen her just you know. We had gone to lunch, I think, in January for her birthday. Okay. So. Um, <clears throat> when you learned that she had died, uh, you said you called Lorene and Karen. Who are they? Uh, Loreen was the other counselor in the Relief Society, and Karen was the secretary, and we were the four that went to lunch together. Okay. Uh, you mentioned earlier talking about uh, the yayas. Will you explain that a little bit more? Well, Karen was diagnosed with uterine cancer. She had had two forms of breast cancer, and the night before she went in to have surgery um, for the uterine cancer, we wanted to just be with her, and we knew she was nervous, so we went to see the movie The Divine Secrets of the Yaya Sisterhood. And... Um, and it was about four women who are lifelong friends and um, go through a lot of trauma throughout their lives. And so it was actually Michelle who started calling us the Yaya sisters after that. Okay. Uh, and so those four friends would be Michelle, you, Lorene, and Karen? Mm -hmm. uh, so you, you called Lorene and Karen, and what did you, uh, what did you do after that? Um, we went, I don't remember exactly what time I found out, maybe two or three. We went to the, to the McNeil home. My husband came with us. Uh, Karen and Lorene were both divorced, and so my husband and I and Karen and Lorene went to the McNeil home, probably getting there. I don't remember exactly what time, 6 o'clock that night, 7 o'clock. Okay. Um, what did you observe when you arrived? Uh, Martin was at the home. He took us around and showed us some renovations for the home. Um, someone came to talk to him, and we mostly talked with Rachel. Alexis, all the girls were there. Alexis was probably more hysterical than I've ever seen anybody at a death. Um, Rachel was emotional. Um, I thought it was odd that Martin showed us the renovations to the house. He never really talked about Michelle that night. But he did have someone else come. I mean, he was talking to someone for part of that time. Did he appear emotional? No. Uh, did you go to Michelle's funeral? Yes, I did. I spoke. You spoke at the funeral? Uh, was that before or after Martin spoke? It was... Wow. <laughs> I've never listened to the funeral again. I know it's taped. Um, I believe he was the final speaker, but I would have to go check that. I don't remember. Do you recall the content of his, his address? Mostly he talked about his childhood in New Jersey and the hard childhood he'd, hood he'd had and um, the difficult life he'd had. Do you recall what, if anything, he said about Michelle? I believe he... I believe he said that Michelle was the one good thing in his life, but he didn't really tell any stories about her or her talk about her being a great wife or mother. Most of the talk was about himself. Okay. That's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. You may cross. No questions. Thank you. Do you have questions for Ms. Radmo? Any of you? May she be released from her trial subpoena? Yes, Your Honor. Very good. You're released from your subpoena. You may step down. Thank you. Next. Here on the state calls Lorene Thompson. Ms. Thompson, if you'll come up here to the clerk's desk. What is your name? Okay, thank you. Are you Ms. Thompson? Very good. Come up here to the clerk's desk right here. Please raise your right hand and take an oath. Thank you. If you'll be seated here to my left and respond to counsel's questions. Thank you for coming today. Will you st uh, state your name and spell it, please? Yes. <clears throat> you want my full name? Yes, please. Well, just your first and last name. Lorene Thompson. It's L-O-R-E-E-N-T-H-O-M-P-S-O-N. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> where do you live? I live in Orem. Okay. And did you know Michelle McNeil? Yes, I did. How did you know her? 
Um, I served with Michelle in our church. Um, she had called me to to help her with the the women's organization in the church. So I served with her. Okay, and do you recall when that was? Um, I believe it was in 1999. All right. Do you re do you remember about how long you were with her? You worked with her. Um, it was probably two to three years. Okay. Um, <clears throat> What? Um, let me ask you: When that uh, when that service ended, did you continue being friends with Michelle? Yes. Will you tell us a little bit about that? Yes. Um, there were four of us that served together, and who were the other three? The other were Cheryl Radmall and Karen Klingler, and Michelle and myself. And um, Karen Klingler had cancer, and um, we continued our our friendship. Um, Karen had fought cancer for a long time and just before her last big surgery and chemo we all went together to see the divine secrets of the Yaya Sisterhood and from that point on um, Michelle called us the Yaya Sisters so there was four of us and we had a very tight close relationship and we would get together for birthdays and sometimes to go to the movie uh, Michelle's daughters were involved in the ballet. She bought us tickets, and we all attended the ballet together. So we were, it was, an, it was unusual because we were all very different, but we developed a strong bond very quickly. Um, did, that, uh, did that closeness persist over time? Yes. Um, were you close to her up until she died? Yes. Um, as friends, did you discuss things like health and well-being and things like that? Yes, we did. Um, okay. Um, <clears throat> did you were you aware of whether Michelle and he had, uh, had any serious health problems? No. Um, <clears throat> when did you learn that Michelle had died? The evening of her death, um, Cheryl and Karen came to my home and rang the doorbell and when I opened the door I knew something was wrong and I looked at them and I thought it was Martin. Um, we knew Martin hadn't been well. Michelle had told us that he had MS and so I thought something had happened to Martin and so I, I asked them and they said no it's Michelle and they told us that I, I don't know who called um, from someone from the family had called so they came in and we determined what we could do to try and help. So we decided that we would. Yeah, let's proceed by question and answer sustained. Okay. What did you do when you, when you found out? Uh, so when we found out, we decided we should go over to the McNeil home to see what we could do to help. We knew Martin was in poor health. Uh, and did you, after you decided that, did you in fact go? Yes, we did. Uh, what did you observe when you arrived there? I could shut my eyes and I could tell you exactly. Uh, Martin's sister, Mary, opened the door and when we came in, uh, it was, there was a strange feeling. No one was talking. Um, Giselle and Sabrina were in the kitchen standing at the counter. I, Martin was sitting on, I believe it was a bar stool, facing them. Uh, Rachel was on the phone making calls and um, it was very somber and we uh, did um, did you interact with anybody yes did you interact with Martin yes w w describe that well we asked what we could do um, and he told you know told us you know he he was doing his best he knew he needed to pull it together for his his children and um, each of us kind of were in different, like, I think that Cheryl was talking to Rachel. Karen had asked where Alexis was, and they went downstairs to get her. And Martin took me and showed me a couple of rooms in the house and showed me what he had done for Michelle, told me he had added on in their, it was a living room so that the grand piano would fit because it was too small. Okay, so she kind of, he kind of showed you some renovations they'd done to the Right, house. showed me renovations in the house and let me know he had done those for Michelle. 
Um, <clears throat> did you attend Michelle's funeral? Yes, I did. Um, did you uh, speak at her funeral? Yes, I did. Uh, did Martin speak at her funeral? Yes. <coughs> what do you recall of Martin's address? Um, it was very different. I just remember his first comment that he made was um, something to the effect that he stood there looking at his wife who was in a pine box. That's really the only thing that I remember about him talking about Michelle. The rest of the talk that he gave that day was more about his life and the hard life that he had had and talked about. He'd had siblings that had either suicided or... Your Honor, I think that this is beyond the scope of anything that's relevant in relation to this talk. Sustained. Did, uh, did you recognize portions of the talk? Yes, I did. From where? Objection, Your Honor. Relevance. Uh, why don't you approach on this? I'm not sure what the answer will be. Will you, um, did you observe Martin after the, uh, or excuse me, after the funeral service uh, at a luncheon? Yes, I did. Uh, will you describe his demeanor? He seemed pretty happy to me. Um, I didn't see, what I didn't made, see What any... made you, what did you observe that made you think that? Um, well, there were a lot of people that were there, and... Um, after it was over, he was up and helping pick up the chairs and clean up, and um, he didn't seem, his demeanor seemed as it had changed. In what way? Um, just that he didn't sound, sound very, real sad. Um, I would have expected that he would have. Okay, sorry. That's all I, I have. I'm sorry. Okay. Are you, you withdrawing the question? Very good. Uh, do you tender the witness? You may cross. So as I understood your testimony, when on the evening of Michelle's death, when, when Martin showed you around the home, he, he was showing you the things that he had done for Michelle. That's correct. And uh, you've previously um, given a couple interviews in this case, correct? Yes. And uh, you've described... Um, your impression of, of Martin's uh, demeanor on the evening of, of, of her death, correct? Mm -hmm. And uh, in, it was your perception that that evening Martin was, was quite sad, correct? He seemed sad. There were no tears. Mm -hmm. Very few words. That's all the questions I have. Thank you. I have one follow-up question. Yeah, go ahead. When Martin showed you the renovations he had done in the house, um, did he say anything about whether he had done them himself? No, he said he had had them done. Okay, that's all. Thank you. Nothing further. Any questions uh, from Ms. Thompson? Very good. May she be released from her trial subpoena? Yes, Your Honor. Any objection? No objection. You'll be released from your subpoena. You may step down. Thank you. Next. You know, the state would uh, request the morning recess. Very good. We'll take our morning recess for about 15 minutes. Ladies and gentlemen, remember my admonition to you. You're not to form or express any opinion about the case until it's submitted to you for deliberation after her having heard all of the evidence. Don't discuss any subject of the trial amongst yourselves or with anyone else. 
Avoid television, radio, or internet news coverage of the trial. Do no research on your own. Courts in recess. <laughs>